In order to succeed, you must fail so that you know what not to do next time. Anthony J. D'Angelo. My friends, we see that all the time, don't we? We practice trade, we practice trade, we practice trade. We learn so much more as we're in that learning curve from what doesn't work than from what does. That's how you hone your skills. That's why we say 10 to 15 minutes each and every day. That's what it takes. Don't worry about how long it takes. It will take as long as it takes. And once you master the charts, you will quickly make up for every single second you ever spent learning it. Don't worry about that. Just stick with it. Of course, the hardest thing for humans to do is persevere. Everybody likes that quick. Everything's magical. Well, that's not the way the real world works. Just 10 to 15 minutes each and every day you can do this. Everything is up for the day. It's easy to be a genius on days like this, and it's easy to be a genius lately if you jumped into the S&P 500 when it turned around back on the 20th of March because it has gone up sideways and up. We have seen just green candles to the moon and every single day it goes higher and higher and higher, and I cannot explain it. I just keep wondering how hard the crash is going to be, because it will come down at some point. But in the meantime, we're going to keep riding this baby up, and we started the week off with a nice green candle heading up. You can see where we bounced off after that last two-day trend line bounced off. The weekly, sorry, not two-day trend line, two-day chart bouncing off the weekly trend line. Remember, this trend line is the weekly, and it's transmitted on all of our charts. And you can see also the half day, not much in the morning, pulled up further in the afternoon on Monday. What about the NASDAQ 100? Uh, the S&P was up 0.35%, the NASDAQ up 0.93%, so quite nice. Basically a ditto on everything that we saw there. And again, not up so much in the morning, bounded up further in the afternoon. What about 20-year bonds? Well, they were up 0.05%, five-tenths of 1% today. What do we see going on there? Well, it's sitting right there on the prior week's trend line. You can see that the Friday-Monday two-day candle that did finish drawing today has pushed through it. We can see where, again, things down in the morning covered a little bit, apparently, in the afternoon, just above the weekly trend line on that half-day chart. So, again, hasn't, hasn't completely reversed on us, but it may be getting ready to do that. But let's just wait, watch, and see. What about gold? Gold up a little bit for the day. We've been able now to draw this weekly trend line. Not all that helpful because it's not going up much. And again, that doesn't excite us. We like to see things bounding up. Didn't have a lot of energy as far as volume goes last week. So again, nothing real exciting here. The real excitement was where things had peaked in gold and then rolled over. So want to see if things are going to really take off again. We shall wait, watch, and see. We can see that things are above on the two-day chart, above the weekly trend line, and on the half-day. Now let's move lastly to Bitcoin, down a little bit for the day, starting the week off, breaking that trend line solidly. Uh, we can see that's on the weekly chart. On the two-day chart, we can see that it's just sitting there trying to push below. Maybe it'll come above. We can see a day and a half of just solid down moves piercing that weekly trend line on the half-day chart. So again, not a great trackable chart. You see where on the first week of the up move, it pretty much hit the top and then sort of slid sideways since then. So not excited about Bitcoin changing its ways yet. Keep hoping that it will. Maybe this will be a nice strong down move for a while. And it will, again, we want to flush out the charts so that we are able to follow things with nice movement like we've seen in the past with something like the S&P 500 where it's clearly up, clearly down, clearly up, clearly down. Just beautiful in the movement and the ability to track it. Well, that's not what Bitcoin looks like. Maybe at some point in the future that'll happen. We'll continue to watch it every day, tell you what we see. 
If you appreciate what we do here, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to like the video. Also, if you go to chartingwealth.com, you can sign up for our daily reviews where we send you an email with the video, also with a training in the show notes every day. If you're interested in what we do and would love to become a Patreon supporter, first thing you get, Options Made Simple, the Charting Wealth Way, our three-part series that everyone loves on Options. Makes it simple, gives you a way to immediately get in and start practice trading Options. Plus, every week, you get early access to our Charting Cryptos, Commodities, and Currencies. You also get the exclusive three-wave trades. Those are... uh, optionable. Many of them are, but they're all liquid ETFs and stocks that we track and that we share with you what our thinking is on those for practice trading. And of course, the 20 weekly vertical crossovers we strive to bring to you each and every week. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.